Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I, uh, we're actually having a, uh, an ice storm in, uh, in Philadelphia this weekend, and uh, I made it back from, uh, from church after the vigil mass uh, to the rectory, but it didn't seem like a really smart idea to try to go over to the chapel. So uh, one of the nice fringe benefits of the priesthood is that uh, we can celebrate Mass in, uh, in a pinch in a lot of different ways. And so to, uh, this weekend we're celebrating from the, uh, the rectory. This is the sixth week in ordinary time. So let's begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And this is a reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has a skin, on his skin a scab or postule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent, his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, Unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you will fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you will fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, 
and you will fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you will fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you will fill me with the joy of salvation. So reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or the Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips and proclaim his gospel worthily and well. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and, kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad, so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know about for you, but with the, the, the pandemic as it goes on and on, um, I still don't really like the mask. Uh, but I have to say, I'm kind of getting used to it a little bit. And, um, you know, it becomes a little bit sec second nature. You're heading out and grab the mask and put it on. And, um, and I'm used to now, it seems so odd the first several weeks, even in church, to see everyone sitting there with a mask on. And now it, it looks, you know, somewhat normal. And in fact, when somebody doesn't use their mask the right way, it really jumps out. And, um, you know, we, we have, you know, a fair number of funerals in the parish over the past couple of weeks. We've had, uh, you know, a real run of them. And, and um, you know, it's so human for people at a funeral you know when they see people sometimes they haven't been out in a long time and they're there in church of course everybody is sad and and grieving and they and they see their family and the most normal human thing is to want to go up to talk to them to give them a hug to give them a kiss all except for like during a pandemic you know it's it's and we had at at one of our funerals not not that long ago 
we had a person I felt for her because I could see that 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 she just didn't realize but she was going around hugging everybody kissing everybody talking to everybody she had her mask on like the chin strap which does no good at all and and people were kind of like afraid because we still don't know enough about this virus you know who knows you know why it's why one person gets it and not another one person gets the virus and they have the sniffles another person gets the virus to run a ventilator and we don't even know why and it causes fear and I think what we've been experiencing over this past almost a year with the virus gives us a little bit of an insight as to what the people in our scriptures felt when they encountered leprosy they were afraid. They didn't know how to respond. They didn't know what was causing it. They didn't know why one person got it and not another. And of course, you know, in, in biblical times, there were a whole lot of different skin conditions that we would recognize, you know, with dermatologists today and say, well, it's, this is leprosy and this not. But everything was kind of grouped in together and considered leprosy if it was on your skin and we didn't know what it was. So imagine what we've gone through in this year, what somebody in the ancient world with leprosy would go through. They had to be an outcast, literally. They lived outside the town. They couldn't be anywhere near anybody. They had to tear open their garments so that people could see in a distance there's something wrong. They had to shave their head, you know, muffle up their beard. And then the worst of all, I think, is that they had to go around and call out loudly unclean unclean basically don't come near me can you imagine how painful it must have been for them the you know not just imagining the painful of leprosy but being outside of a small town or a village looking down at your family at your home at your people and not being able to to be a part of their lives so in this gospel and we heard all about all those rules in the first reading. But in this gospel, when this leper came to Jesus, he broke a lot of rules. First of all, he went up and he approached Jesus, which he should not have done. And then he got close enough to him and he spoke to Jesus, which he should not have done. And then he, he asked Jesus to heal him. And our, our Lord, it says, had pity on him. But, you know, there's, there's two things in this gospel that really move me, you know, really more than anything else. And the first one is this. Jesus had pity on him. And it says here, it can, it can almost get right by you because we read it quickly. It says he stretched out his hand and he touched him. Jesus put his hand on this guy, which technically would have made Jesus unclean. But that was the first human touch that guy had had since he was first declared unclean and it was the touch of Jesus our Lord wasn't afraid he wasn't afraid of whatever was wrong with this guy and he healed him and he gave him the gift of being able to be reunited reincorporated with his family and his community and with his God because he could now worship with everybody else but notice what happens the second thing is that after Jesus says don't say anything and and we can talk about that at another time why Jesus says don't say anything but the guy goes out he spreads it which is normal I mean you just got healed and I'm sure everyone's asking what happened to you um, but Jesus wasn't any longer able to go into the towns because everybody knew about him everybody knew what he had done and he couldn't move about freely so Mark slides this in here. It says, so Jesus remained outside and in deserted places, but people kept coming to him. What did our Lord do? Our Lord switched places with him. This leper was living outside the community, out in the deserted places, and now Jesus is. He took upon himself, our Lord, what was thrust upon that poor leper and you know our Lord does that for us as well we can't feel frightful feel afraid to go to Jesus with whatever it is inside of us that needs to be healed 
Maybe it's something physical. More often than not, it's something spiritual or something emotional or something with one of our relationships. Don't be afraid to go to our Lord because our Lord is never afraid of whatever is wrong with us. Jesus is not afraid to touch us, just like he wasn't afraid to touch that leper. He's not afraid to be present to us. And if need be, he's not afraid to even take upon himself what it is that is, that is burdening us, just like he did for that leper now living as an outcast, and just like he did definitively when he hung upon the cross. He took it all upon himself. So I hope for this, this week, whatever it is that, that is burdening us, go to our Lord with it. Ask Jesus to heal us. Ask Jesus to make us clean. And he will. He will touch us. He will be present to us. He will give us his grace. He'll give us ultimately his own life. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, uh, the creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the, thir on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us present to the Lord our needs and petitions for ourselves and for people in the world today. And, uh, you know, I, I do read uh, the comments uh, uh, after Mass is, is over. I go through and I read all the comments. And if you post anything that, um, that you would like uh, to pray for at this time, you know, all those who are, who are praying with us, we can do that all together. And after Mass, I'll, I'll make sure I pray for all of those things as well. So we pray for our, our church around the world. We pray for our church in the United States. And we pray for our local church. That we may always be receptive to those around us who are in need, just as our Lord was to that leper. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are in elected office and especially those who are in a position to make a real difference in the lives of those who are weakest and most vulnerable among us, starting from the moment of conception until natural death, that they may always remember this sacred duty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are working and, and doing emergency services and especially when, uh, when the weather is bad and dangerous, that they may be kept safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have been unable to leave their homes or unable to move about as freely as they would want to, um, that they, they may not feel discouraged, and uh, that they may know the love and support that they have from so many people, especially spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
And finally, we pray for all those who have died, and especially those who are close to, uh, to, to those of us who join together here on pray, in prayer, that they may be welcomed with great joy to the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us present to the Lord all of these petitions that we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son taught us to ask and to seek and to knock, and we have just done so confident that you will consider our many needs and our trusting faith, and in your great mercy hear and answer us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By his passion on the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Nelson our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in Christ. Died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Father, Lord, the Father, work of the Spirit, and death, work of life, and the world. In this verse, the Holy Body and Blood, keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
now of course is the time for the reception of Holy Communion and I know that for uh, for those who aren't able to come to church and for uh, for those who have been so separated this is the hardest time and so what the church asks us to do is to uh, to join in what we call a spiritual communion and that's where through prayer at this moment at this time we unite our desire to receive the Lord and that's united to the desire that Jesus has to be one with us to come to us and we believe that not so much in, in a sacramental way you know body blood soul and divinity but in a very special way Jesus does come to us and he is present to us in our hearts and in our souls so let's make that prayer of spiritual communion now And let us pray having fed upon these heavenly delights we pray O Lord so that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord Amen and the Lord be with you and with your spirit and may Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks for uh, joining this liturgy. Um, I know it's kind of makeshift with uh, uh, the, the weather this week, but hopefully uh, everything will be in our favor next week. We can be back in the chapel, and God willing for all of us before so long, we'll be able to actually join together in church again. In the meantime, thank you so much for praying with us, and um, God bless you, and I'll see you next week.